Chicago Mercantile Exchange for uh, linking myself and uh, Kanangan Futures together. It's uh, really a privilege and honor to be here again. And of course, not forgetting all uh, the friends tonight, uh, Kanangan Futures friends and clients, and maybe some of my personal friends as well. I didn't know that I have uh, so many friends in Malaysia while well, during COVID-19 that would do uh, quite a bit of webinar, but when I was physically there in uh, Malaysia, in KL and different states, uh, different ones come and uh, meet up and say that you've been hearing our webinars and it's such a privilege to uh, meet some of you in person in Malaysia. So uh, again, uh, tonight we're going to discuss a very interesting topic here and um, it's about market outlook and gold and crude oil. And I think that those that tune in will really in for a treat because uh, at this moment, I think the commodities market are kind of being ignored, but I can uh, share with you my view that uh, I think in a very near uh, next few weeks, uh, maybe next few days, I think uh, this commodity market will start to move again. Why? Because it's being ignored. And who is the craze right now is that, of course, we have an AI rush. And how is it related to tonight's topic? Yeah, it's a little bit related here. I'll explain to you how it works here. Uh, let me just give uh, maybe five, ten minutes about the AI rush. Then uh, I'm going to touch on the uh, current goal and crude oil performance while the AI we saw Nasdaq uh, hitting uh, almost autumn high, not yet, and uh, but gold, crude oil, and the rest of the commodities are basically being ignored. But it's ignored doesn't mean that it's not moving. So after that, I'm going to give you a fundamental and technical reason on the mid-term to long-term goal for specifically on gold and oil futures or the oil market. If you are not trading futures, it's fine, but uh, it would apply to the gold and oil market as well. So uh, I hope that will give you some, uh, offer you some trading strategy towards the end. Uh, unfortunately, unable to get the live data or live chart uh, to present to you tonight, but uh, I've been updating the chart up to about 4 p.m. this uh, afternoon, so I think the chart will be as as, as good as live. So towards the end, we're going to have a time of Q&A and uh, with, my, with some help with Erica, and he's going to help me to trans transit the slides here tonight. So let's move on. Next slide. Okay, so I will not introduce myself. Uh, basically, uh, for those that hear me for the first time, I uh, specialize in market behavior or market psychology. And I also focus on quantumental. A lot wise, quantumental basically is quant plus fundamental. And we're going to see so much clarity tonight. Why gold and oil especially is... Uh, going to have some movement in the very near future. Next slide. OK, so uh, by personal disclaimer, so what I share with you is uh, my for my personal consumption. So please, of course, consult your license broker and definitely Kanangan Futures. And it's always a privilege for me to have all this space to share. And uh, uh, my, my hope really is that as I share, I hope that you'll see what I'm doing here and it will impact you in a way that you can, I can hope that I can influence you to have uh, not a change, but to influence you to have a lateral thinking skill. Uh, investment and trading is not so outright, but yet it's not that complicated as well. But we just have to think beyond the box. So tonight I'm just going to highlight how I use uh, both the quant, which is technical and fundamental, and it will make a lot of sense and clarity. Next slide. Okay, let's look at the first one. Let me just uh, take about maybe the next five to ten minutes to talk about the AI rush right now. And how is it related to our topic tonight uh, regarding the gold and oil market? Next one. OK, so what you can see here, uh, I'm not too sure you can see my cursor, but if not, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just got to bring you to the left side of things that uh, the COVID crisis uh, that was just imagines the whole wave down the COVID crisis. Thank you, Erica, for the movement that you have. Now, uh, the whole wave down, the COVID crisis, it was so near, but yeah, it's so far because I think most of us have forgotten. Uh, at a point in time, of course, before the COVID crisis, the Nasdaq hit high and the market literally moved down 30%. Yeah, so, but with the uh, Congress stimulus package, that you could see that between uh, uh, March of 2020 to towards the end of 2020-22, just that stimulus itself, it created uh, a new high for basically the whole US market. Things just turn around and today we are basically have forgotten about what COVID-19 have hit globally, right? 
But when it hit the high, as we could see here with the pandemic stimulus, it hit the high, but it's also the beginning of the rising inflation and it's also the beginning of a rising interest rate. That sends the market to, uh, uh, at the end of this last year, it sent the market to the, all -time, uh, to the recent all-time low. And the new development is, of course, the AI rushed. So Microsoft announced in January 2023 that they are going to tie in this open uh, AI to have this chat GPT. And uh, I think myself and many of you may have used it and you'll like it and it spread really fast. And the recent rally, what's the cause of the recent rally in the stock market is, of course, we know that it's, uh, there's always a lot of loose credit around. There's a lot of hot money in, in short. Is that going different market? Whatever hot, whatever the market is hot, the market will flow that right. So now the latest hot market is the AI rush. So next slide. So now um, let me just explain to you what happened to the stock market and how is it related to uh, the uh, commodities on coal and oil. Is that so? What's happening to the stock market? Why is it so hot, especially in the US? Is uh, some of you may uh, rational that is AI rush? Yes, I think so. Invested big bets on all these, just this few big companies. Yeah, it caused the market to have a change in sentiment that we've long forgotten about inflation, we've long forgotten about banking crisis. So now this could be a reason if you ask me that this AI rush, is it AI rush? No, but I think it's the tech development or in short it's called AI rush. It's going to last for a long term. But in the same time, I think there's a bigger problem here. But before I get into that, what actually is the cause of this recent rally? Let's move on to the next slide. And the, the, the other two reasons is inflation appears to be cooling off. Yeah, so we read the CPI, the latest CPI from about 9.1% or 9.5%, I can't remember. I think 9.1% in June last year, it came down to a recent low of about 3%. So I think indeed that's good news. But can I say that uh, not exactly good because, in fact, I think the recent years that the Fed have also monitor another uh, uh, indicator called the PCE. Yeah, so um, because the PCE, it in fact, opinion, it measures inflation better, is more sensitive, and the PCE, the number is not good at all. Although the CPI is coming down. So why the market has been going up here, yeah, AI rush, inflation seems to be cooling, and the bank run crisis in March, which is not that long ago, I think most of us have forgotten, it also seems to be under control. And that caused the market to rally. Yeah, so the two, the last two is very important. The inflation appears to be cool and bank run seems to be under control. And these are the two big important elements for this season, for this year, for next year, and next, and for maybe the next two to three years. It's very important that do not forget about inflation and bank run. So, but at the moment, I think the good news is that this AI rush, let's go to the next one. So my question to you is that if inflation start to move above three, of course, we are very familiar with CPI, but also take a look at the C, uh, PCE as well. And if inflation start to move up or CPI start to move up to three, uh, so what will happen to the stock market means that you start to move up to about 3.54 and it's possible yeah so by end of the year but what is fed target fed target is at two percent he do not want to compromise and some reporter actually asked him how about you lower your expectation from two percent to three percent but he gave an answer to the reporter is an outright no we are always stick to two percent so they are very clear uh, of course, my topic tonight is not about inflation, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So this question I'm going to ask you right now is that, uh, but I just want to move quick. I will not want to get into the chat box here. Is that just ask yourself if inflation, which is very likely from 3% start to move up to 3.2, 3.5, and maybe end of the year close at 4. So what would happen to the inflation and what would happen to the interest rate? And if that happened, what would happen to the stock market? So uh, let me just give you an answer. The stock market will start to have headwinds. And the gold and oil, if inflation start to move up, which is likely the case, because the PCE, if PCE is something new to you, please go and Google it. PCE is still moving up. It's still staying high. And if that's the case, I think gold, oil, and rest of the commodities are still moving up. So what I'm trying to suggest here is that, you know, the hot money is just that much in the market, which is a lot, 
So it always flow with whatever that's hot in the market. So for this season is an AI rush. So if the AI, AI rush will come to a standstill, but for long term, it's still good. But the key news is always about inflation and bank run. Actually, the reason why the bank run in March is because of the higher interest rate lead to bank run. So as long as inflation is not cured, and there's always a risk for high inflation. If high inflation start to pick up again, I'm suspecting that the bank, a few more banks may get into trouble. So the March bank run is because of bank having too much money and also because of the rising interest rate. So there's a lot of implication. So let's move on to the next slide. So how is it related to uh, AI related to gold and oil in short, is that hot money chasing after hot things. So, but this AI rush will come, will have a point to have some retracement. And when that retracement come, the hot money will chase after other things. And the other things, what I have identified, it will be commodities. So what we could see here, I painted in red here. It was during the bank run. Next slides. Yeah, I can move on, yeah. So the, in red, that was a bank run. Again, I think many of us have forgotten about bank run, right? So what you could see the performance here is that the NASDAQ, it was so outstanding. Downturns and S&P is not too bad, but I'm going to draw your attention to Russell 2000 because Russell 2000 is a very good measurement of the rest of the 90% of the stock market in the United States. So 90% of the stock market in the United States also, I guess, also employ the mass market. Yeah, 90% of the stocks are not doing that well at this point in time, if you can see on this chart. But they also employ, I believe, 70% of the mass consumer. And if the SME in the United States are not doing that well, definitely their spending power are not so good. So recession will be still in play. So, uh, but this drive over the last uh, one, uh, now is already in July, over the last seven months, is caused by AI rush. So we recognize that. Number two is also inflation seems to be taming. Number three is bank run crisis seems to be under good control. Now, next slide. So we're going to discuss about this. Yep, we discussed about these two key points. Do not forget about inflation. So while we are in this uh, AI rush, so did we able to forecast about this AI rush? Yes, at the beginning of the year, I think I was in Malaysia in uh, February to give you an outlook about what's happening to uh, 2023, and I presented that in the first quarter, I'm not too sure if it stretched the second quarter, but it did. I'm seeing bullishness in the US market, but of course, at a point in time, I have no idea about this, this AI rush. But that's based on technical and based on fundamental reason because the inflation seems to be cooling. So therefore, I have this expectation that the market at the first or maybe the second quarter will be moving up. So we're quite right. Let's move on to the next slide. But I would say that uh, continue to keep track of inflation, and I'm very certain that inflation definitely is not over yet. Okay, so I'm going to give you a hack that how can we tell that inflation fear is not over, that we start into the yield curve. As long as the yield curve is still inverted, it means that inflation fear is still there. So continue to eyeball on that. And if inflation continue to move up, means that interest rate continue to move up, and that may affect the bank. So I'm going to give you another example later on that the bank run crisis definitely is not over yet. Why? Because most of the banks are still trading below the March level. So March was the first trigger of the bank run. Now, next slide. Okay, so let me just um, give you this very quickly. Then we're going to move on to the gold and oil. Just want to give you some basic, I would say basic, just Try to give you some fundamental understanding here that the inflation and bank run is still there. Yeah. So now let me just talk about, uh, let me draw you back to why I analyze that inflation fear is not over yet because uh, the hack is that we look at the yield curve. Now, how to understand this yield curve is that you look at the three months yield is about 5.4%, as you could see that, and the 30 years yield is about 3.92. That's a very unconventional because in a very healthy yield, the short end is always lower number compared to the far end. Yeah, so again, my topic is not about the yield curve, so I'm not going to explain that. But I'm just going to give you a hack how to understand, to know that the inflation fear is not over yet. It's still in the playbook. 
is whenever the yield curve is inverted. It makes no sense because now the short term, uh, I'm not too sure about in Malaysia, but in Singapore, the if you are borrowed money to buy a house, I think most of us do that. And um, you will realize that the float rate is higher than the fixed rate. Yeah, that's what's happening right now, at least in Singapore, but I'm not too sure about Malaysia. So what you could see here is that on this chart, when was the first time, uh, last time it got inverted, it was uh, during the 80s. Uh, where the blue line, you can see the blue line. So blue line basically represents the sh three months interest rate on yield is way higher and stay on top of the uh, the other remaining two, 10 and 30 years. That's called inverted yield. But over the last 40 years, you can see that generally the light blue line has been under. Yeah, so that's a healthy yield. But only recent month, if you could see that in the very recent month, can you see that there's this blue line? Yeah, is starting to cross above and staying there. So that is, if the yield, inverted yield continue to stay, then it became a problem. And that's why you have to read into the Fed. Um, although the CPI is 3%, but they never say that they are going not going to uh, cut or pause the interest rate for the coming meeting, which is just about a, uh, a few days later from here. They're going to hide likely it's going to hike 25 basis points. So my concern is that if the interest rate continue to move up, what will happen to the bank? Okay, next slide. So I'm, I'm quite done with the uh, my presentation here between inflation and bank run. On last slide about this is that you could see here is that, let's look at the, uh, there are 4,000 banks in the United States. Yeah, so the, the line, we see the straight line being drawn among all these top eight banks in the United States it, the start of the uh, flat line, it was the March banking crisis. Now you could look across the top eight banks in the United States. Only one bank that is now currently is above the March banking crisis high. But you can look across the Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, US Bank Corp, PNC, Trust and Goldman Sachs. Today, right now, is still trading way under the March. So it also represents that the banking sector in the United States are still having a lot of headwinds. So these are the top eight banks, but you have to understand that in the whole of the United States, there are about 4,000 banks. So how about the other few thousand banks? I can only suspect, I, I go through a few of them, uh, maybe another down the list, about 10, and all giving me the same reading. So I suspect that the uh, the other few thousand banks should be under the top, below seven, top seven, you know, still under the March uh, crisis low. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say here. So sometimes when we look at a chart, it's very, very representative. So what is really moving is the tech stocks. Next slide. So I'm going to move on to the topic about oil and crude oil performance. So in short, is that why I brought you to understand about AI rush. So now maybe we have a better understanding why is this AI rush about. Yeah, it started with Microsoft, announced that they're going to have this open source AI tied to their chat GPT. And some of us use it and we really like it, or some represents many in the world. Yeah. So now we have this AI rush, right? So there's nothing wrong. I think we'll, we'll be here to stay for many years to come, AI technology stocks. But the big issue now is about interest rate, inflation, yeah, there's interest rate inflation, and also the banking crisis. It's not over yet. Now, how would that affect the gold and crude oil? Next one. Okay, so next one, next slide. Yeah, so this is what happened to uh, beginning of the year. You saw that since January 2023, Microsoft announced that they are going to have this open source uh, chat GPT. And we saw that the stock market move up. But how about the gold and the oil at the beginning of 2023? We could see the oil, it kind of range between this 200 US dollars Nothing exciting, but if you are a range trader, uh, I think there's some volatility, but compared to NASDAQ, is not too exciting. But oil has been forgotten. Yeah, so oil since the be beginning of 2023, while the tech stock have rallied, oil you could see that it stagnated for in this $20 range. But my proposition to you here is that the hot money is out there, now is into the AI. But come to a point, they will flow to where? Well, inflation maybe still exists in existence and maybe still pumping up because of the PCE. Then uh, when inflation started to move up, the commodity will start to move up. 
then I think the gold and the oil and the rest of commodity will get very exciting. And that's where the hot money is should be flowing into. So sometimes when I, I'm usually when I deliver uh, outlook, it's always ahead of time, maybe about half year, if you talk about midterm, ahead of time. But it's more exciting is that when I'm, we are ahead of time, things are not exciting, but it's good because we're preempting the move. Therefore, I'm advocating that maybe you should start to consider to position yourself. It's boring, but yet I think what I'm trying to say here is that exactly it's boring, but we have this foresight that um, maybe the hot money may be going into the crude, uh, the commodity market. So we try to understand the market a little bit more and position our uh, uh, chip there before the mass market start to go into, before the hot money start to pick up. Uh, by then, if you want to get at 72 US dollars for the oil, maybe well, you have to pay a much higher premium at 85 or 95 US dollars. That's what I'm trying to say here. Next slide. Now, let's look at the fundamental and technical for the uh, long term for gold and crude oil. That's why I call it quantum enters. So if you see that I actually use a lot of charts, uh, those are quant. So part of the quant is that we look at chart, recognize the patterns because we believe that patterns always repeat itself. But of course, if we can combine the understanding of fundamental development, how would that uh, merge and tie with our technical view? I think that will even give us a, a plus point in our investment and trading decision. Now, next one. Now, so I would say that, let me just make this statement here, is that gold is undoubtedly one of the best inflation hedge assets. Why? Next one. It is because, let's look at the next slide here, is that if I'm going to look at uh, the year 2000, uh, year 2000, I was um, maybe about six years in the market, uh, fresh out from my studies, from my national service. So year 2000, you could see that a lot, a lot of, uh, especially the uh, asset fund managers, they, uh, they, they don't like gold, I don't understand. But if you look at the, uh, of course, gold, one of the uh, downside for gold is that if you invest in gold as assets, they do not pay you dividend. That's the downside. Um, therefore, I do not keep a lot in gold, uh, about 10, but I want to increase to about 15 to 20%. Um, because they don't pay dividend, that's the big problem. But if you look at the capital gain alone over uh, comparing Dow Jones and gold, uh, it has appreciated about 780%, seven folds over the last 23 years. But of course, if you look at since about 2020, 20 until today, the gold is boring where it can't range. But if you look at the whole, in fact, gold in the year 2000, it was about coming close about 300 US dollars. But today is about 2000. So can you see how wonderful the goal is? I think uh, for myself personally, I started to understand goal a little bit more after the uh, 07, 08 crisis. So when was my first encounter or investment in goal that was in the year 2008? So when goal was about 800 US dollars. So today those positions I'm still holding on. But of course, the painful part is that it do not pay dividend. So I just take that as a capital gain. So you can get involved in the physical, paper or even trade the gold futures as well. So why I trade the gold futures is that since I know generally the trend is still up, uh, my focus is always to buy on dips. So just uh, a little hack for those traders that uh, even as a trading, I enjoy trading, I also en enjoy having some long-term position as well. So, but when I trade, I'm very mindful that I have to understand where's the general trend. If the general trend is still up, I will try to my best to find for opportunity to buy on dips. Yeah, so next slide. So we understand about gold, and gold is leading the commodity. Next slide. Now, I would say that gold compared to, uh, of course, there's many other commodities in the CME basket. Uh, these are just a few, but I want to take a closer look about the gold market compared to the rest, and what can you uh, figure out? Yeah, I know that the feeder cattle, feeder cattle thing means the red meat, the uh, the young cow meat, yeah, the red meat. So um, uh, the beginning of this arrow across all this commodity is where the uh, COVID-19 started. Uh, that was three years ago, uh, because I think that shook up all the market, including the financial market, the indices, uh, including commodity. So from there, of course, most of the stock market is higher, but the commodity also moving higher as well. But who is taking the lead 
I felt that it is a goal because since the beginning, maybe I want to point your attention to the goal right now, is that at the start of the arrow, it was during the start of COVID-19. But if you look across, the goal has been consistently on the uptrend. And the rest, uh, during the start of COVID-19, it was at the trough. And today is also general direction is heading up. So the key is, I suspect that inflation is still in play and it's not done yet. Uh, if you're going to read into the numbers in Europe, it is still very bad. So, um, so of course, US hope that it will not flow over the US again. But looking at the PCE number, it is that reading, it is still no, not good at all uh, under the Fed watchful eyes. So what I'm trying to say here is that um, as I'm wanting to all these commodities, if gold continue to stay firm, uh, my expectation for the rest of the commodity, it should move up over time. Yeah, so I'm not very anxious whenever I invest into commodities for the long term. So of course, for commodities in long term, you may ask me, uh, what am I buying? Of course, you can get into some uh, go uh, commodities funds or maybe ETF. Those are for long term. So I have some of that. So it doesn't really affect me when the market moves sideways because as long as I check the goal, it's still elevated about 1,009, 2,000. I think I'm good. The rest of the commodity should pick up later on. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say here is that goal, based on my study, is leading the pack. Now, next slide. So let me give you another explanation about then how to track goal. Now, we have to understand that goal is not just a physical matter. Uh, some of you may say, may ask me, so what, what can we use in gold? Yeah, of course, with accessories and it's too expensive to use on circuit port, although it's a very good conductor for, for that. But gold, we have to understand that gold is beyond just a metal. Gold, it is also a currency against what? Against the US dollars. So whenever we look at the currency against, say, yen, and ringgit, yeah, ringgit or yen or yen or ringgit. If ringgit is up, then you're talking about yen is coming down. So at the moment, I think the yen is coming down and ringgit is going up, if you're gonna take reference over the last three years. So I suspect that many Malaysian will go to Japan for holiday because your currency is strong compared to the Japanese yen, yeah. So, so same thing for gold as well. So gold, we just have to view gold as a currency against what? Against the US dollars. So what does it mean here? So it means that when gold is up, US dollars is down. When US dollar is down, it means that gold is up. So what is the recent headline that we read about US dollars? I think some of you may be reading it that the US dollars at this point in time is having some a lot of headwinds, has been moving down quite a bit. It also means that gold is heading up. Now let's look at some example here over the last uh, 10 over years. Next slide. Just want to illustrate to you that when gold is up, dollar is down. So they have this inverse relationship. It's even more true when US uh, printed more money. Yeah, so let's look at it. Next slide. So when we look at here over the last, uh, during this period from 2008 to 2011, when the US dollars are down, dollar index represent the US dollars. But let's look at the gold. Gold has been moving up. And a very interesting finding here is that Although the dollar has moved down 66%, but the gold has moved up about 10 times more. If you could see that, right? It's wonderful. Okay, next slide. So remember this illustration to demonstrate to you here is that when US dollar is down, gold is up. When gold is up, what will happen to the rest of the commodities? The rest of the commodities should be up. It will take turns, yeah, yeah. So uh, because gold, in my opinion, is one of the best inflation hedge. When did the gold start to move up? The year 2000. The inflation just to pick, pick up over the last two years. Yeah, based on uh, the financial market, we only feel that inflation started to pick up about two years ago. But honestly, if you look way back in the year 2000, the inflation started to pick up after the year 2000. For the last 23 years, gold has been a very good inflation hedge. Now, so again, this demonstration, it represents that the dollar index has been moving up during this period from 2011 to 2017. It's moved up by 46%, but if we can look at the goal, and the goal has been coming down 46%, so it's equal. <laughs> so when US dollars move up, gold moved down equal. But when US dollar moved down, 
go move up even more. Now let's take a look at the next slide. Yeah. And we can see that uh, when US dollars is doing this period, move down and go move up by five folds. Yeah. So I wonder if let's say the next trend when US dollars start to move down again, how many times to go or move up? This is just an observation that we observe observe patterns that that's called quant because when we look at quant is part of the thing is that we also look at patterns as well now next slide so uh this is a recent move where us dollars is up uh since 2000 2000 2 or 2 1 um, and gold has down about 21 percent now next slide so next slide is the most recent one next yeah and next yeah, so this one, the most recent, so I prepared this like about two weeks ago. It's still there, about there. And we could see that the gold, the dollar index start to move down from here. And I suspect that um, there's technical reason, there's fundamental reason, there's a good case that the US dollars may continue to decline. And uh, of course, my topic is not about dollar today, but you, on your own understanding, you got to ask yourself, is there a proposition that the US dollar is going to continue to decline? And my answer is yes. In fact, over the last two years, I've been talking about uh, it is possible to see a higher US interest rate, but yet a declining dollar. A lot of people, uh, my, my audience couldn't comprehend. How could it be when the US dollars or US interest rate is higher, US dollars, it should be attractive. That was my message about two years ago, but today I think we are seeing that the 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 statement of can interest rate U.S. interest rate move up, but yet a declining dollar, and the answer is yes. Okay, but that's not my point of discussion here tonight. My point of discussion here tonight is if U.S. dollar is down, likely gold going to move up, and gold is a good inflation hedge assets, and I reckon that the rest of the commodity will also move up subsequently. But before that, what, what's the market doing here is that there's a lot of hot money around. Now, what is a hot money? Hot money means that over the last few decades, especially up to 2008, there's a lot of uh, loose uh, money policy. Loose money policy means that uh, the central bank give out uh, credit, loans very easily. So there's a lot of money going around. Yeah, so those businessmen able to do business, they got rich very fast over the last, especially over the last 15 years, because they took advantage of all these loose money policies. So there's a lot of hot money going around. So wherever, whatever community is hot, they move into it. So my proposition here is that now the hot money is in the AI rush. The next one I suspect is still going to be inflation play and the commodity is going to come back again. So the hot money is going to flow to the commodity market. So what we are I'm suggesting here is that Though the commodity may appear a bit boring at this point in time, but please do not lose sight and just preempt where the hot money is flowing into later part of this year. I'm not exactly sure about the timing, but um, we don't have to predict the timing, but we have to know where's the flow and where's the fundamental. Okay, so we're seeing that dollar is coming down and gold is still going stronger. So we understand the relationship about the inverse relationship between the US dollars and gold. Now, next one. So the strength of the dollar, therefore, is very crucial for inflation. Now let's go to the next slide. So we understand about uh, the US dollars. Now, um, I will not describe about the fundamental of US dollars, but let's look at a very technical reason. And this was about two weeks ago when I prepared this because we need compliance for clearance. And if we're going to look at this quarterly chart in US dollars since about the 1980s until current, and if you're going to draw a straight line down, and I think uh, I have uh, quite a number of posted, quite a number of YouTube uh, video that I uh, give tutorial about how to construct a downtrend line, a very classic downtrend line. Uh, you can look at those videos. Uh, basically, there are two rules, um, but today it's not technical study, so I will not go through it, but go, go through some of the tutorial. That we could see literally, this is what I call a very classic downtrend line. And two weeks ago, Dollar index was at 102, but today is at 99.45. So I just captured this at about 4 p.m. And next slide. And the best part of it, technically, I could see that there was a bearish engulfing body as well. So this became uh, a proposition technically, 
that perhaps US dollars, based on this technical study, I think there's a chance that it will not break above this recent high at 115 plus. Yeah, so likely I think it's going to be weakened technically. So fundamentally, I need to support who is selling the US dollars, uh, who is offloading the US dollars, despite of a high interest rate. So all these, I think you've got to make up your own assumption. What's the fundamental reason? Of course, I'm my reason uh, based on what I read. And let's look, look at the next slide. Now, in the context of if the US dollar is going to continue to move down, so therefore these elements are used as an element for my, uh, um, when I invest in commodities, which I've already invested. So before I decided to invest more or trade more, uh, I have to look at different elements. So I need to look at the dollar index. If dollar is still pointing downwards, then I would have assumed that gold is moving up. If gold is moving up since it's the leader of the pack of the rest of the commodities, then that commodities or resource fund that I have likely will be in good hands. And of course, I continue to monitor what's happening around the world. Now, next one. So this is just a recap that I hope that you can appreciate a little bit more that why gold is the leader of the pack that I felt and um, and the rest are just uh, moving higher. And I think what's the latest news was yesterday where, uh, you know, the Ukraine war started, uh, that was about last year, February last year. And then there's this Black Sea, so they finally have an agreement that uh, they could export the grains from Ukraine and Russia to all over the world. They, they are the main supply of uh, uh, bread especially in Europe, because they are the main exporter of grains. But there's an agreement that the, uh, uh, this Black Sea agreement that they can continue to export all this grain. But yesterday was a big news. What was the big news? The big news was that this agreement uh, has a timeline. And that was yesterday was the timeline. I put down my calendar, 17 July 2023. And this Black, uh, Black Sea agreement collapsed. Yeah, so it will also uh, cause some turbulence in the grain prices and soybean today is much higher. Uh, if you could see that uh, corn will be higher, definitely grain is higher, wheat is higher prices uh, for those are on, into all these uh, edible commodities. Um, and feeder cattle, uh, nothing related but over the last uh, uh, half a year, if you can see that feeder cat cattle, the rate meat has gone much higher. You know, so I was uh, at the wet market over the weekend. Uh, I wanted to prepare some nice steak for my uh, children. And uh, just very curious, since the feeder market in the futures market is the live market so much higher right now, uh, is it going to cost me more for my steak, my ribeye steak? And fortunately, I think the market, is there's some delay. It's still pricing at about uh, um, $4.20, uh, sing dollars at the market. So I'm quite thankful. So we still can enjoy quite relatively affordable stick at this point in time. So, okay, next one. So now let me just uh, discuss about some trading strategy here. So we understand about some fundamental uh, between uh, gold and crude oil. Uh, let me just do a very quick recap here. I think the starting point is that um, we discuss about the hot money, that hot money currently is flowing into the AI rush, but you'll come to a point that uh, we're not rush too much yeah because now it's an ai euphoria so just be very cautious about it so whenever if the inflation start to pick up again and based on my reading i think inflation is still on the high because of the pce where fed is monitoring even closer than cpi uh it's still not good number so if the inflation start to move up and i think is um, market consensus is that i think for the next two federal meeting they're going to hike 25 basis point each, and that will lead us to the uh, uh, the Fed fund rate to be 5.75 percent. Yeah, at least uh, the third quarter of this year, but not talking about end of the month. So if the interest rate will remain high, I think there will be a quite a bit of turbulence. Uh, bank run crisis not over. Uh, inflation is high means that gold uh, may be continue to move up and that may affect the rest of the market as well. Now let's look at a very technical reason on the uh, trading strategy. Yeah, next slide. So I prepared some um, um, static chart uh, because unfortunately I can't show the live chart today because of some technical issue. But good thing that I stand by some static chart, but it's as live as it can be. 
Uh, let's look at the study on the long term gold prices. Next slide. Now, this is a quarterly gold prices. Quarterly gold prices means that every candlestick we're seeing as three months. Now, if I'm going to draw a straight line across, and this one maybe uh, I, I like something that's simple, uh, simple horizontal line, simple trend line, and it makes a lot of sense, then you tie in with some fundamental development. Now, let's go to the next slide where I draw a very straight line across. That we could see that since uh, the first peak, uh, somewhere around 2011, as you could see here, if I just got to draw a straight line across uh, since the pandemic started, that you could see this behavior that the goal is trying to break free at the resistance somewhere just below about 2000. That the first peak you could see here is that uh, somewhere around 2000, where pandemic started. The first peak, yep, thank you, Erica, thank you so much. That this was the first peak, it broke, but then it come down. So that's a false break. And second round, it tried to break again, then it come down again. Yeah. So the third round, it tried to break. And this was last quarter, it ended in March. You could see that in the March, it closed above this about 1,960, about there. It closed convincingly there. But if you look at the current quarter, it's still staying well above. So what is expecting that the goal is still staying firm based on this technical reason? Yeah, they, based on this quant understanding here is that the last quarter as of close in March 2023, it sent me a signal that um, since we observed the left, which is the history that we could observe that the market is trying very hard to break above. It attempted numerous times. It tested once, twice, three times. Yeah, so the whole idea about the concept is that as long as the US continue to print money, US dollars will get diluted. As long as the US dollars continue to be diluted, the gold will continue to move up. Right? So that's my concept why I start investing in gold at 800 after the year 2008, yeah? So because I understand that gold is a currency hedge. As long as US dollars continue to stay diluted because of the printing of money, so it's no longer a secret, it's an open secret. It's not even a secret, it's a it's a it's an open understanding right now that US dollars will be diluted. It's physics, yeah? So if, um, if it's dilute, US dollars diluted gold, it should be moving up. So that's what I'm seeing here. And in March closing will give me a very clear indicator that uh, as this quarter, which is just ended from uh, April to June, as it retraced down, I'm going to find every opportunity to buy on dips. And that's what I did. So um, this is not the latest chart, but you can look at the latest quarter if you want on your end. Next slide. So you can see that there's a lot of resistance. One, two, next slide. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see here in the third quarter, it kind of broke above. It's like, yeah, so that's my uh, recommendation. So therefore, at the start of the event, uh, I did mention that it maybe will not take, take too long for the next few weeks and uh, next few months, I'm seeing that uh, commodities start to move up again. Uh, one of the reason because of this very technical reason, but we also discuss about the fundamental reason why is it so. Okay, so. That's about it for gold, and we're going to move on to uh, oil very shortly. Uh, so basically, how to trade the gold is uh, earlier. I give you a, a, a clue: is that when we trade the gold, or in any market, uh, for me, I don't really do two ways. Uh, I tried that when I was much younger, but after that, uh, I got very tired. So sometimes I also get lost because when you buy sell both sides, you get a bit lost. Uh, but what I do now is that. Um, and they get very busy, you get a bit tired, yeah, because so much activity, so much noise, right? So what I do now is that I try to understand about where's the main trend. So even I start for a little while, as long as I know the main trend is still uh, there, I will hold on to my long position. So in this context, commodities, I felt that the main trend is still up. So therefore, I will take every opportunity to buy on dips. So in given time, if fundamental have not changed, the technical main trend have not shifted, I think it will still move up. So although I may start some position last few days, last few weeks, but I'm patient enough to hold through. As long as fundamental have not changed, as long as the uh, technical reason have not changed. Uh, so it make trading much more easier, so much uh, more look forward to. Yeah. So next slide, I'm gonna talk about the oil right now. Now, so again, this is, I'm gonna switch out 
in a more, more macro view about oil is the crude oil. Now, this is the yearly chart for crude oil. Yearly chart means that what you can see on the screen is every candlestick. It represents one year. OK, I'm going to again, I'm going to draw a straight line across. But before I present you the next slide, can you uh, have an imaginary straight line across? Yeah, just try to draw an imaginary straight line across. Can you tell me where is the resistance of the oil? Maybe this time round, uh, you can participate in the chat box. Uh, let me see uh, what you, uh, before we get into the next slide, uh, let's go to the chat box and see if, uh, my question to you, I think everyone can participate here. I suspect that the chat box is open. My question to you for all participants is that if you're going to draw an imaginary straight line across, where do you think the resistance is? Yeah, we start now. You can start to contribute your uh, dollar numbers. My question to you, all of you, is that uh, you can put in a chat box. If you're going to draw an imaginary horizontal line across, where do you think the res resistance, the key resistance is right now? Uh, yeah, I think amazing. I think there's some delay here. So Philip, you say hundred, Gary hundred. So you you guys are all expert now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's quite easily recognizable, right? So sometimes I play around with time frame, and then I could say, tell that uh, next slide. Yeah. So your 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 you have observed it correctly. If I'm gonna draw a straight line across, that you could see that over the last how many years. Over the last one or two decades, you could see that oil are trying to break free, break free at 100 US dollars. But uh, it tried a few many times. If it break free, it come down, break free, come down, break free, come down. And during COVID-19 days, it break free, it come down. But it also represents that there's this resistance at 100. Now, when is gold uh, or rather oil will be start trending up seriously? Uh, I felt that once it can close above 100 US dollars in the yearly context, you're going to see that uh, the oil price will start to trend uh, above 100 US dollars. So based on this observation, I think all of us are very clear about this. I think we, I have at least uh, a handful of examples that you could see that oil price is 100 US dollars. OK, so it's not that difficult, right? So just put in some effort and some understanding to observe the market. So you can observe that it's 100 US dollars. So if you size it down to hourly chart, the principle, it is the same. So what I share with you uh, here is that you can apply the same principle to the smaller time frame to trade the market as well. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So my expectation for um, for oil is that as the um, inflation continue to rise, which is I think likely the case, uh, especially when gold continue to move up beyond 2000, 2100, 2200, say for example. And if oil uh, is still at uh, this price, 80, 85, I believe that oil is a steal for you to get into some position. What is it for short term, mid term, or long term? Uh, but definitely there'll be some strong resistance at 100 US dollars, as we can see here. But I believe that as uh, inflation continues to pick up, but of course, time and season. When the time comes, we also have to study about what's the fundamental reason. Uh, if you break 100 and it settle on that year above 100 US dollars, I think you will have to know what to do. Uh, should you continue to hold on or to take profit in the oil when it reach 100 US dollars or not? Now let's move on to the next slide. Next slide. So just want to find some fundamental as well. So what's the recent fundamental news? Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Now, the recent fundamental news is that, can you see that there's this um, hammer that's going on there? Next, next slide. Yeah, so I saw in March there was this hammer. So is there any news that tied to it? My answer is yes. Okay, so if you have uh, follow some of my YouTube uh, uh, video, uh, those are free. So every, every week I try to produce one video about what's happening to the market to keep you updated. So uh, do look at, the, look at the past few videos that presented. So I saw this um, today. The oil is about 72 US dollars, about 72, 73 right now. So then when I do this case study it was about 68 US dollars, but we shall assume that oil will move up. 
Now let's look at the fundamental reason at the point in time I saw this, that was a hammer. Next slide. So is there a fundamental reason? Next slide. So the fundamental reason is that on 4th of April until today, um, OPEC plus uh, come up with this news that they're going to cut oil production. Since April, uh, there are different batches. I do not know when are they going to stop, uh, but definitely from this thing, you can see that the OPEC plus, the OPEC still have a lot of uh, say about uh, they, uh, when, when are they going to close the tap, minimize the tap or open a tap. Yeah, so uh, you know, in a way that the oil price will have certain support. So again, my context is that all these are important news that you should take a look at, especially yesterday, the 17th July, where the Black Sea Agreement collapsed. And that will, uh, how would that translate to commodity prices in the near and far future? And how would that impact the rest of the commodity basket? And by looking at the oil or gold, especially gold is still on the elevated, so I think it's a matter of time that oil will pick up and the rest of the commodity market will pick up as well. Next slide. Oh. Okay, next slide. So this is a, a monthly chart. So if you go back to the yearly chart, that's what I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. I'm suspecting that the rest of the year, uh, we're going to have a quite exciting time for the oil market in this demonstration. And uh, of course, the resistance, 100 US dollars, but I'm not going to blink too much. So at the point in time, if you touch 100 US dollars, I'm going to look at the overall situation around. If this goal is at 2003, 2004, and 5, then maybe I will not take profit at 100. I'll take very partial. Then along the way, I will hold some as well. Uh, hopefully, I'll break above 100 US dollars. So that's how I uh, hedge into uncertainty. Uncertainty definitely is still there. Uh, how we hedge is that you can consider the commodities market. And of course, again, for those that are interested in trading, you can consider uh, all these oil futures and gold futures as well. So how you trade is that, again, is that try to understand the uh, general trend. If the general trend is still up, then you try your very best to focus to buy on dips. Next slide. So I move on next slide, just a quick introduction about uh, CME commodity futures. On micro, gold is the smallest of its kind. So basically in short, every $1 movement, it represents 10 US dollars. So if you buy or sell short at 2000, today the pricing, say for example, is 2000. So the whole contract value, that means the whole um, sum that you are carrying overnight is actually 20,000 US dollars. But of course, when you trade futures, you don't have to come in with 20,000 US dollars to buy one micro gold contract. That's why there's margin. But I just want to, for good risk management, whatever contract you're engaged in, you have to understand the full contract size you're holding overnight, 20,000 US dollars, which is pretty light. And the smallest of the kind, if you're interested in oil or crude oil, is called a micro crude oil, where one US dollars movement is 100 US dollars. Of course, the smallest movement is about one cent. So since one US dollars is 100 US dollars, if you engage yourself today, let's say, for example, the price is 70, I'm interested to buy at 70, and what's your total exposure? Your total exposure since one dollar movement is 100 US dollars. If you buy 70 US dollars, your total exposure is 7,000 US dollars. So it's also pretty light as well. Okay, move on next slide. I hope that will get you excited that actually trading is quite fun. So just uh, give you some damn uh, um, good news from our sponsor here is that the um, they have this also micro e-mini futures. So over the last few years, they launched a lot of micro product. So this was one of very success story that they launched uh, just about a year before the COVID hit. And then the when COVID hit, uh, many of us are staying at home and it make a lot of sense to hatch into the trade and hatch into all these micro indices where we have a Russell, NASDAQ, uh, S&P and Dow Jones at a point in time. Yeah, so next slide. So it's there. So if you want to participate in the NASDAQ, or maybe after today's presentation, you may want to stand by that once the AI rush is over, not yet, yeah, but I'm looking at it very closely. If it's over, you kind of pick, then you may want to consider a sell short in the indices as well. So that's kind of I'm sta standing by to do that for the indices. Uh, but now I'm collecting the, um, accumulating the um, commodities. 
while to stand by on trading the indexes on the sell side when opportunity arises, not yet. So we can see that over the uh, span of uh, the last few years that the volume, transaction volume really go from strength to strength. Yeah. So all this micro product that we uh, introduced tonight, actually there's a lot of uh, transaction going on. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so um, there's this QR code I just want to introduce you. Uh, maybe just go back one slide. That um, especially for those that you are new to uh, trading, uh, maybe what I mentioned about the macro market, you understand you can flow. That's good. The next things that you want to may want to try is to trade the, into the market, and they have this. I really like this a lot. Uh, they have this 15 Q and A. Uh, these are the questions that you may want to know. I suspect so you just click and you can find out in writing more about how to get involved in the micro e-mini uh, market. And of course, the best person to approach is still your broker who's Kananga Futures. 